there, folks. No, you're not dreaming. I am hosting Football Mastermind for one week only because you'll see why in a second, actually. Um, so, yeah, as you remember, last time Tom was quizzing me on my specialist subject, which was Manchester United from 1998 to 2013. And if you want to see how I got on, you can, of course, check it. We'll probably leave the link in the description below. Corner. Sorry? Top right corner, eh? We'll leave a card. <laughs> yeah. And um, so, yeah, this week as kind of part two of, I guess it's more as the pilot of the Football Mastermind, we wanted to make sure that each we both got a go. So I'm going to be giving Tom questions on his specialist subject, which you'll hear about in a minute. And, of course, some GK questions too. So how are you feeling, Tom? Nervous. <laughs> Good. <Do you> know? <laughs> so do you want to reveal to the world of YouTube and our one viewer your specialist subject? My specialist subject today is going to be England World Cup campaigns in my lifetime, um, which 1998 through to 2018. Um, some rubbish, some great, but always an England fan, eh? Well, yeah, the, the troubles of. So, are you ready to just get started then? There's no need to waste too much time. Very ready. I was born let's, ready. Let's go then. So, go. Of the five men to manage England at the World Cup from 1998, how many have not also managed in the Premier League? How many have not also managed in the Premier League? Yes. One. Correct. Which goalkeeper saved three of England's penalties when the three Lions went out to Portugal in a shootout in the quarterfinal? Correct. Which Everton player scored a stoppage time equaliser against England to take the 2018 round of 16 title? Correct. Who was the only member of England's World Cup squad in 2014 that didn't play in the Premier League? Frank Lamp. Uh, pass. Who was the youngest member of the England squad at the 2002 World Cup at the age of 20? Michael, uh, no, pass. At the 2014 World Cup, which Chelsea player wore the same number for his country as he did for his club? Frank Lampard. Correct. At the 2010 World Cup, who became the first player since David Beckham to wear the number seven shirt for England at a World Cup? Steven Gerrard. Aaron Lennon. Which of England's three goalkeepers at the 1998 World Cup was not a Premier League winner? Nigel Martin. Correct. Who missed the vital penalty in the shootout against Argentina in the round of 16 match at the 1998 World Cup? Oh, it's going to annoy me. Pass. Oh, David. David. You've passed. From 1998 to the present day, England have only played the eventual winners of a World Cup in one tournament. Which country was it? Brazil 2002. Correct. Who scored the winner for Italy as they beat England 2-1 in their first group match of the 2014 oh, World Cup? Correct. Who wore the number nine shirt for England at the 2018 World Cup? Marcus Rashford. Nope, Harry Kane, and that is time. Oh, that was a howler. Oh, that was a howler. So just looking at the questions that you passed on, uh, who was the only member of England's World Cup squad in 2014 that didn't play in the Premier League was Fraser Forster. Uh, he was still at Celtic at the time, wasn't he? Correct. The youngest member of England in the England squad at the 2002 World Cup, age of 20, was Joe Cole. Oh, OK. Wouldn't have got um, that. And then, as you said, who missed the vital oh, penalty yeah. in the shootout against Argentina was David Batty. I knew that like the back of my hand because I've read read a book, um, read read uh, Henry Winter's book about England's World Cups. Okay. Uh, documentary about managing England. I can I see David Batty's penalty in my head, just a really weak effort, I think, to the right of the keeper, and that must have been heartbreak because we played yeah. so hard well that game in '98. So then, as a total, you scored eight in your specialist subject. So, commendable score, I'm sure you'd agree. I'm happy with that. Yeah. So, as, as we had in, in my show, and as we're going to have in future episodes, a little chat about your life this time as a Chelsea fan. So, I'm, I'm assuming, you know, you're not just a fan since the Roman Abramovich years, and you're actually, it's in your family, it has been for a number of years. So, tell us about how you got into supporting Chelsea. 
So it was really my dad, because I mean, he, from a young age, he was always my sort of inspiration when it came to sport, um, particularly armchair sport, my dad. Um, and he moved down, he moved into London, I think in his 20s. Uh, he was he was a football, general sort of football fan growing up, but he never took a team. And then he lived in Fulham, not very far from the bridge, back when it wasn't, you know, as expensive as it is now. Yeah. Um, and he used to go a lot and it was just around the time where where Hoddle came in as manager and we brought in a lot of exotic players, you know, your Rude Hullets, Shen Luca Vialis. And he really got me into it then. And I mean I I've been a Chelsea fan all my life. I remember long before Roman came. Not by much, but but enough. Yeah. So who would you say then was your, your favourite Chelsea player from your lifetime at least? So like my all time favourite has to be Frank Lampard. I mean there's no doubts about it. He was an incredible footballer. I mean, you don't score 20 goals from midfield without being special. Well, no, obviously, yeah. Central midfield as well, not even a sort of glorified attack with mid role. I would say, though, a couple of people I wouldn't, possibly unsung heroes. Ricardo Carvalho has got to be one. I love him. Uh, Paulo Ferreira has got to be another. I think a very underrated right back. Um, yeah, both came with Jose. Yeah, they did and achieved very much with him. So, final question then before we launch into the general knowledge round, which is your favourite Chelsea shirt of all time? It's not the one I'm wearing, uh, 2017-18. I'd say my favourite, and it's going to sound cringe because it is a recent one, would be the 2018-19 third shirt, the baby blue um, shirt with a bit of a Stanford Bridge graphic down the back. It's a lovely shirt. Um, and I've got it with Jorginho on the back, one of my sort of modern favourites. But I'd have to say the 2004-05 home shirt, and then they used it the year before as well. Beautiful yeah. shirt. And the 05-06, actually, Umbro. Both of them were really nice shirts. Yeah, fair point. And I can't really disagree with any of those picks. So then, as we said, moving on to general knowledge some two minutes worth of hopefully not too difficult football questions so you've got eight to build on i think the target would probably you like to get to around 20 i'm guessing overall I so I let, let's try and get you 12 here so i'll just get the questions ready which they are now so let's go who was the first title sponsor of the premier league carling correct Sol Campbell played in the Premier League for Tottenham Hotspur, Arsenal, Portsmouth, and which other club? Pass. Who scored the first goal of the Premier League era to be televised live? Oh, I was going to say Quinn, whatever his surname is. Brian Dean. Brian Dean. Nope, Teddy Sheringham. Ghanaian striker Hammond, formerly of Fulham, shares his first name with which legendary rock and roll star? Jimmy? Elvis Presley. Which are the only two clubs in the top four divisions in England whose names begin with the letter D? Derby County and... Oh, I'm going to blank now. This is annoying. Derby County and Darlington? Oh, Darlington. Derby County and Doncaster Rovers. Wimbledon won their only FA Cup in what year? 89 or oh, 88 they think it's all over it is now is a line of commentary commonly associated with the 1966 world cup final but it was uttered by whom brian moore ken wolstenholm which club was the first to be managed by brian clough nothing forest hartlepool united burger king sponsored which spanish club from 2009 to 2012 oh. correct German goalkeeper Manuel Neuer provided a voice for the German version of which Disney Pixar film? Little Mermaid? Monsters University. Which team was the last to win the English top flight whilst being managed by an Englishman? Uh, Leeds United. Correct. What colour is the New Zealand home shirt? White. Correct. And that is time. So, oh, hang on time actually that was. So let's say you got one... Stop that. Okay, thank you. Um, one. Are we six, maybe? 
got let me see so you've got carling right you got um getafe right that's two you got leeds right three you got new zealand right so that's four. Oh dear so that's a total of 11 so we've got the i guess it's the presenters leaderboard between me and tom we're not gonna put ourselves in that very much for the guests it's very much your program if you ever wish to take part so yeah that leaves tom on 11 points i guess i don't know commiserations you think are you happy with that score tom not at all i was happy with the first round i was very happy with the world cup round i thought there were a lot of tough ones in that general knowledge round but fair play mate i think you're gonna do me okay i think you're only one year off with the wimbledon one and again i think the don carter just he just couldn't come to you um yeah i guess that is that is the nature of the beast I, i'm surprised you didn't get monsters university given that's your favorite film uh, <laughs> especially in german never seen it, mate. Never yeah. seen it. <laughs> anyway i think that's probably a good point to round off this episode so our next episode is going to be the first to feature a guest and i think i'll pass it over to tom he's a very close friend of tom to tell you who is going to be appearing so yeah, he's a he's a Twitter brother in arms, I suppose, and he does a lot of YouTube content himself. He's also a co-presenter with me on the Chelsea Echo. Um, he's Matty's Hoffer, um, great guy. Um, moving back to London, also been featured on Top Sport uh, on Talk Sport, um, particularly prior to the Europa League final. So we're very excited to have him, guys. And I'll also say, um, presenter Tom back on now. If you want to join. Email us, um, the Phoenix Club at gmail.com. Yeah, message us on Twitter. Let Josh or Tom know if you've got us on Facebook or Instagram or whatever way. Carry a pigeon. I don't even know. <laughs> Let us know. Pay, yeah, you can message on Excel. Exactly. We don't have a secretary, so we can't. We, we, it all goes through us, guys. <laughs> but honestly, as Josh said, this is your series and it's going to be your leaderboard. Um, and we've got lots of cool ideas with it, but let us know. Let us know your specialist subject. We want the weird and wonderful on there. Um, obscure as you like, guys. Honestly, we'll, we'll accommodate you. Um, and we'll see you very soon. Hope to get the next episode out next week.